Well, good evening, everybody. I'm Hillary Strauss, General Manager, Citrus Heights Water, and I want to thank you all for coming tonight. We know that uh, you have many things going on in your lives, and we're so very grateful uh, for your commitment and time and energy that you'll help us to put into this uh, effort. And it is really a, the beginning of what will be a journey for us as we work with you to help plan out what will be more than half of our infrastructure and our next generation of infrastructure because more than half of our water mains will have to be replaced, we think, in the period between 2030 and 2055. And that's a very, very significant undertaking. And so for all of you to have the opportunity to work with us, we're very grateful. And when I had a chance to look at all of your backgrounds and to see the very, very wide breadth and depth of professional experience and life experience and customers who have been with us for many gener generations, really, and some who have just recently relocated to the district. Some of you who are from Northern California and some of you who are from Southern California, you all bring a fantastic and breadth and depth and diverse array of experiences to the table, and we're very grateful to have that opportunity to work with you as we look at all sorts of different options for how to phase out, cost out, and ultimately fund the replacement of some vital infrastructure for drinking water in your community. So with that, um, I would like to bring up our project manager for Project 2030, Missy Pieri. Missy is our district engineer and engineering manager, and she is our staff project manager who will work with uh, our entire team here, including Harrison Associates and Ralph Tellis, our, uh, Harris is our engineering consultants, and Ralph Tellis is our financial consultant, and Godby Research, who will look at some market research data for all of you so that by the time that uh, you are ready to make a policy recommendation to the board of directors, you'll have a lot of engineering data, you'll have a lot of financial planning data, and you'll have some market research data to look at. So you'll have a lot of good data to help Ray Reilly, our board president, and his colleagues uh, to make a good decision as we move forward on infrastructure, both in water mains and ultimately, too, with water meters. And that's one of the reasons we also have Rex Muir, our water efficiency supervisor here tonight, because as we get into the water meter project, which will be a little bit later on down the road, you'll be working with Rex. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Pieri. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I haven't even started yet. appreciate that. Thank you all for coming. And uh, I'd like to kind of touch upon the three things that I'll be discussing here. One is the purpose of the Project 2030. And then also I'd like to go over the Project 2030 goals. And then finally go over the, the roles and responsibility of the Customer Advisory Committee. So first, what is the purpose of uh, the Project 2030? We thought this was a kind of a cool graphic because uh, kind of really explains why we're doing this project. So um, this, the district was uh, established in the 1920s and really remained pretty rural until about the 1960s, and that's when that development boom occurred from the 1960s through 1985. And we had a lot of development that occurred. And uh, if you can go back, so yeah. Um, we had a lot of development that occurred, and all those water mains that were installed by private developers, the district inspected those water mains, and then they were donated to the district. And then we um, now own, operate, and maintain those water mains, and ultimately need to replace them. Um, just like anything, you know, there's a useful life for water mains, and the useful life is about 70 years, plus or minus. So you add 70 years to 1960 and 1985, and that takes you to the years uh, 2030 to 2055. We really see a tidal wave of water mains that will uh, need to be replaced starting um, in 2030. So that's kind of why we named this project 2030. So the purpose of this study is really to develop a plan on, on how we plan on doing it. Let me go to the next one. So here's a list of the Project 2030 goals. Um, 
kind of the first step that we are currently working on is developing an asset inventory. So what that means is the, the district currently has, I'm going to call it a smart water map. We have a geographic information system map. And it's, it's kind of smart, but it's, it's still kind of dumb right now because we don't have all the information inputted into the map. And so what we're doing right now is we're going through all of our um, paper files and finding all of the pertinent information of our water facilities. We're pulling out those files and um, getting those documents scanned. And then the next step after the documents are scanned, we have a consultant. We have Harrison Associates and their team. They will be going through all of those documents and inputting the, the age of the pipe, the pipe type, and then the length of the pipe is also already included in the map. So once that information is inputted into the map, we'll have a, a nice smart, smart map for us to use for our, our next phase. So our next phase is to develop a comprehensive water main replacement program. And really, this is where all of the technical work will occur with Harris and their team. They will be also using another software um, program that will help them determine what mains to replace first. We'll be looking at various um, factors, which we'll be presenting that to you all in the upcoming customer advisory committee meetings. And then you'll provide you know, input on what factors are important. And then based on that, this water main replacement program, we will develop a prioritized list of water mains um, that need to be replaced. Once that's completed, we will um, prepare cost estimates, and then we will have um, Roth tell us they will prepare different funding options. So you really have two different, two different ends of the spectrum on funding. You can have money in the bank and pay for water mains as, as you need them to be replaced. So you can do that, or you can go the other end of the spectrum, which is you maybe don't have any money in the bank, and you go out for bonds. Um, so those are the, kind of the two ends of the spectrum. Those are two funding options we'll be presenting to you all. But then we'll also have some blended approaches, um, you know, kind of combining those two. Some other funding options we'll be looking at are grants. We have um, obtained grants in the past, but they've been pretty small. There's really not a lot of grant money for this type of work, but that's not to say we aren't going to try and look for some federal monies and state monies. So if you guys know of any money out there, uh, please let us know. And then last but not least, you know, we're um, another project goal is to inform and seek input from Citrus Heights Water District customers. So we're doing that in various ways. One way is, is by having these meetings with our customer advisory committee. So that's just one way. But we also have um, other methods as well. Um, the city of Citrus Heights has customer or neighborhood associations. And we do go to those meetings. And we will be, be doing that this year and informing the, the public of this project and then getting um, feedback from them as well. We also have social media. The district has a Facebook page where we um, place important information on our Facebook page. And then we also have a YouTube channel as well. And I believe this, uh, this uh, presentation tonight will be on our YouTube channel. So people can go back and, and look at this. And then one other thing uh, we are doing is, uh, as part of the study, is our market research. So we do have a consultant that will be contacting a small percentage of our customers and asking them questions and getting feedback from them. And then that market research will be presented to you all and then also be presented to the board of directors as well. So these are kind of the, the five main or four main goals of, of Project 2030. So what is your role here um, as a customer advisory committee member? So for our customer advisory uh, committee members, you know, you're really the advisory body to our, our board of directors. You will be considering 
the engineering and funding options that we will be presenting to you throughout the course of these CAC meetings. And then you will be making a policy recommendation to the board. So at the end of this, um, and we will discuss this fur further, we will have a, a chair um, that will be making the policy recommendation to our board at the end of, of, of this study. So, you know, what you're doing here today is very important, and we really appreciate your, your time. So thank you again for, for coming. And uh, with that, I will pass, I believe, the mic to Laura. Great. Thank you so much. So my name's Laura Mason-Smith, and I'm your facilitator for the CAC process. I'm an independent consultant, but I'm based here in the Sacramento region. I've worked, I'm working as part of the consulting team, and um, I've also worked with the district over the past two years facilitating their strategic planning process, so I'm really excited to be with you. And my job is really just to keep things on track and on time, make sure everyone has an opportunity to participate well, make sure you get through the agenda and we finish on time. So, um, so that's my role. Um, so let's go through the agenda so that you have a sense of what we're going to be doing uh, tonight. And then um, we're going to do an activity just where you get to know each other better. So. Um, so as you can see um, from our wonderful slide here, um, you've already heard uh, about the, the uh, overview of the project, and you'll have a chance to get to know each other better and introductions, and I'm sure by the end of the process, you'll know each other really well. Um, Missy was will come back after that and really give some background on the district. We'll be doing a lot of that in uh, your meeting number one, but this will be a brief overview. And then you'll have the legal overview. So Josh Nelson, who's the Assistant General Counsel for the district, will be talking about the Brown Act, because um, that affects all of you, and also conflict of interest. So going through that um, in much detail. We'll have opportunities for you to ask questions. I will capture those. We'll make sure those are part of any notes that are produced from this meeting so that you'll be able to refer to them. And then we'll be looking at um, the CAC process, going through the visual, the calendar of the different meetings, and just uh, highlights of what's going to happen at those meetings. We'll give a preview of the first meeting, which is coming up in May, and, um, and then just gather your takeaways from tonight. You know, what is it that you're taking away from tonight's meeting at the end? We'll have an opportunity, time for public comment, should we have public that will want to make comment and we will wrap, wrap by nine o'clock or earlier. So, but nine o'clock is sort of our outside limit. So that's our agenda for tonight. And um, now what we'd like to do is have an opportunity for you to get to know each other better. And all you'll need to do is bring yourself. You won't need, you won't need anything to write on. You won't need a pen or anything. But if everyone would come out to the middle of the room, I'll explain what we're going to do. We won't be doing the hokey pokey or anything, so you don't need to worry about that. <laughs> you can relax. Well, I can tell this is going to be an awesome group. <laughs> So how about, I know you got to talk to quite a few people, but I'm guessing you didn't get to talk with everyone. So how about if we have each of you get up and introduce yourself. So with your name, I know that's hard to read from over here. Your name, one of your answers. So any one of those questions, where you were born, something you're grateful, for, whatever, your answer and your answer to the last question, what you're hoping to get out of tonight. So it's those three things your name, an answer to any of those questions, and what you're hoping to get out of this. And you have to do that in 30 seconds. So you've got the mic. I'll turn it on. And then you'll just pass it to the next person, and they'll stand up, and we'll just go around the room. Thanks. My name is Chris Ralston. I'm with the San Juan Unified School District. I'm the facilities manager for them. I will be representing them in this process. Um, 
I can answer too quickly, born and raised in Phoenix, and as a child in Phoenix, we played outside a lot, and I answered my question the same to everybody. It was playing with the Ninja Turtles and the G.I. Joes with my buddies in the neighborhood. And the reason, what do I pers try to get out of this committee is more of the participation, making sure that the uh, school district's interests are not blocking what the residents mostly want to see and making sure that we're participating as a good neighbor and not trying to do anything other than that process. Uh, hi, my name is Amy Foff. I'm a resident. Uh, I live off of Greenback and Mariposa. It's a really unique area. Uh, we have a half an acre, so I'm grateful that I get to grow my organic food. Um, and I hope to have water to continue to water my fruit trees and the organic produce that we grow. I'm really grateful for the very unique house I live in. I'm grateful for my animals and my health and for my wonderful man who um, makes sure that our 1961 house that was all original when we bought it uh, is still standing and doesn't leak and uh, especially with the upcoming rainstorms, which I'm also grateful for. I'm hoping that it will fill our Folsom Reservoir so that we can have plenty of water for the summer. Hello everyone, my name is Noe Villa with the Sunrise Recreation and Park District. I uh, was born and raised in uh, Roseville and uh, I basically uh, hoping that uh, I can make an impact we're one of the largest consumers of water uh, in the Citrus Heights area, so we want to make sure that uh, for the future uh, parks that there is water available for them. Hi, my name is Javed Siddiqui, and I was born in what is India, and I was raised in Pakistan. Then I went to school here in Sacramento, and I... Uh, Hope to participate in this process with our group and provide you what you're looking for in terms of recommendations. Thank you. My name is Monty Morris. I am a realtor slash general contractor here in the greater Sacramento area. Um, I am with the Citrus Heights Chamber of Commerce as well. Um, Let's see, uh, answer to one of the questions was, uh, uh, the, th the thing that I love about this region so much is the proximity to everything, beach, mountains, everything great, right in our backyard. And um, I hope to get as deeply involved with the community of Citrus Heights as I possibly can. And my name is Suzanne Guthrie, and um, I'm a three-year resident up here, uh, really, appreciating and enjoying the area, particularly getting out and walking on the parkway and many of the open spaces here. And uh, of course, the water is an, a key point in that. It's kind of strange to go out to Folsom when it was so low. And so really appreciate uh, the resource that we have. And um, as part of this process to help ensure that uh, all of us as residents have um, both access to that resource and can afford that access. Hi, I'm Rick Moore. Um, I'm, I live in Citrus Heights. I've lived here for the last year and a half. Um, see, where should we start? I was born in Denver, Colorado. I lived everywhere. My dad worked for NASA, so we travel about every five years all over the country, wherever NASA worked out of. But I graduated high school back in Denver, in the area, and I've uh, been in California since 1989. What I'm hoping to get out of the process is uh, I really ex am excited about the way that the district's reaching out to involve the community. I think this is something that's very unique, and I'm really anxious to see the success of that. I think this is something that could be a good model for a number of communities. Thank you. My name is David Page. I was born and raised in Los Angeles. I've been here in Citrus Heights for 20 years, just a hair over 20 years. Uh, things I'm uh, grateful for. My wife has put up for me for 32 years. Um, daughter just got engaged on Friday, and my son's coming home from serving overseas tonight. So I'm pretty excited about this day. And... Uh, <laughs> 
What I would like to get out of this is I love this city. Um, the way you guys do things is awesome. Everybody runs in the black here. Things are good. You guys have a good outreach program, and I'd like to absorb some of that and learn. And if there's something I can add to it, I'd love to do that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jenna Moser. I'm a new resident to Citrus Heights. I've lived here for about eight months. Um, in my prior life, I was a city planner for the city of Winters. I hope to bring some of my planning experience um, to help this process. Um, I hope to get out of this process. Um, High-speed internet for Citrus Heights. Um, <laughs> I'm standing on the soapbox of Dig Once. You're going to hear it from me every time. Thanks, guys. I'm Mike Nishimura. I've lived and worked in Citrus Sites for 30 years. Um, I'm the general manager of the Elephant Bar Restaurant, and I'm represent. I'm even though I'm a resident, I'm representing the Sunrise Marketplace. I'm on their board of directors. What do I like to do for fun? I'm a volunteer wrestling coach of the girls' wrestling team at Bella Vista High School. And what do I want to get out of this? I'm just looking to preserve the future of Citrus Heights and of the Water District. I want to make sure that everything continues to go for another 50, 100 years. Hi, I'm Cindy Price. Um, I'm not a resident of Citrus Heights, but I am assistant manager for the Sylvan, uh, Sylvan Cemetery District. And so hoping to um, get to know the community more than just the ones that are coming to buy cemetery plots. Hi, I'm Peg Pinard, and I'm also a relatively new resident to um, Orange Vale. And everything everybody has said here about how well this is uh, presenting itself, you guys are fantastic. I do have a background in knowledge of some of these things, and that's what I hope to bring and get out of what you are proposing to do in your um, replacement mains and water uh, issues. I dealt with those as mayor of the city of San Luis Obispo when we had less than a year's worth of water left for the entire community, being totally dependent on, um, on above ground storage, especially just three reservoirs. Um, we really faced this. And we had to begin thinking about where are we going to get new water sources, not just keep putting wells into the same aquifer and thus drying it up just that much faster. Uh, the same thing with the sewer. That was something I was very involved in when we were, when our city was fined by the state and uh, for multiple violations of of, of uh, sewer. Uh, the words just kind of you, know, you get older, and those words just kind of fade a little bit. But when the uh, when the sewer system was overloaded and we had release of raw sewage into the creeks. So how are we going to do it besides just paying the fine? What could we do to actually make it better? And then as, this, as a chairman of the Board of Supervisors for the County of San Luis Obispo, I was the main contact in person uh, moving the uh, cleanup of Avila Beach, if any of you have ever been familiar with that. It had m many, many problems that we dealt with almost every agency in the state. So my volunteering here is to help that hope that you can use what I know and hopefully I can raise some issues of how can we solve things for future planning, which is what I keep hearing here, and, uh, and get the best of what we've ever experienced in any place else anywhere in terms of solving these issues because they are certainly not just here, but worldwide. So thank you. Ray, really, I have the pleasure of being a director of the Water District. My coolest vacation was to Antarctica. My favorite vacation location is uh, Yosemite. What I'm looking for here is to be sure that we know as much as we think we know as a water district and hope that some of you here can provide input that's going to make this whole process more effective. We've got a good plan. We've got a good history but I'm sure there's somebody in the room who's going to say something that's going to make the whole process better and more successful. Hi, my name's Catherine Cooley. I'm the assistant to the city manager at the city of Citrus Heights. One of my favorite activities to do is put together Legos with my children. There are a lot of ways you can play with kids that mm, it's not that interesting for the adult, but I've actually been buying those Lego packs and we do that together and I find it rather enjoyable. So I think we're going to go to Lego land as a vacation, hopefully here pretty soon. 
I'm looking forward to learning more about our water resources here at the city. I don't personally know that much right now, and I'm looking forward to being educated on the topic as a city administrator. Also, functionally, I am interested in seeing how this process goes as a consensus building method for big topics that we have to decide upon for both um, the city of Citrus Heights and all of our special districts. This seems like a really good tool and I, I want to watch functionally how it happens. So thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to this process. My name's, <clears throat> excuse me. My name's Doug McTaggart. I, uh, up until about two years ago, I was president of uh, DA McTaggart general building and concrete contracting. Uh, I've done quite a bit of uh, concrete restoration for not only Citrus Heights Water District, but uh, several other water districts. Uh, at the moment, I, I would say what I'm most grateful for is, um, as I mentioned two years ago, uh, I was president of the AMA Tiger General Building and Concrete Contracting. If you hold the mic up like this. I was make it forced to shut it down because I, uh, uh, I had a couple accidents and I had uh, emergency back surgery and uh, wasn't sure how things were going to work out. Um, and it's worked out pretty well. So I'm, I'm really grateful that I'm here tonight and able to sit down and, and be with you folks. Um, a, a person I have a great deal of respect for uh, said that I might add to this committee. And uh, so I said, well, if this isn't a setup, because <laughs> he set me up before, uh, you know, I'll apply and, and, and see if I can add something. So in a selfish way, what I'm trying to get out of it is maybe the intrinsic satisfaction of knowing that I have added something. And uh, hopefully that'll be true. So, thank you. Hi, I'm Kimberly Berg, and I own the uh, Citrus Heights Car Wash up the street on the corner of Auburn and Antelope. Um, what am I grateful for? So many things. I'm a very positive person. Um, I am grateful to live in Citrus Heights. I am grateful that in, I've owned my business for 15 years and I've turned it into a very highly successful car wash. Who would have thought, you know, that a, a one petite woman could run a car wash? And um, anyway, it just, it warms my heart. I'm very grateful to the community, for all my customers and the, the, the work I get to do every day. Um, what do I hope to get out of this? Um, I think, well, the water district, uh, provides the high quality water that I use at my car wash. And my customers love my water. So when I had this opportunity to be a part of this um, advisory committee, I jumped at the chance and thought it would be a great win-win that maybe I know something about water that I could share and vice versa, I could learn something more about the water that I use at my car wash. So I, I'm excited that, I'm excited to, to learn so much about all of you and what an amazing, a, a diverse group of people with backgrounds and education and experience. I think this is just going to be an amazing um, group to work with and I think we're just going to come up with a, some great solutions to uh, replacing the water meters and the water mains. Thank you. Hi, my name is It helps Patty. if you stand. My name is Patty Catalano, and I'm a property claims adjuster with a large insurance company. And I was born and raised in Northeast Ohio, but have been in Citrus Heights for about 30 years. And what I hope to get out of the process is just to learn and be part of what is obviously a huge project and a huge undertaking for our community. And again, just, just get involved with the community and, and learn the whole process of everything. I'm Portia Middleton. I'm a mechanical engineer. I am a resident of Citrus Heights. I have two little boys and I'm hoping to use some of my technical background to help kind of facilitate this process and bring up some important questions about, you know, things that probably people don't find it really um, interesting like pipe sizes and, you know, structure and materials, which are some of my favorite things to do. <laughs> Hi, I'm Julie Byers. Um, so I wanted to um, just say thank you to the to uh, Citrus Heights Water District for that process that you went to to um, get the diversity of the group that's here from the different areas in the, in, in the water district, making sure there was representation uh, all around and, and those. Um, so um, I've been a resident for, well, since 2002 in the water district. 
And it's um, been an interesting. It's it's been interesting because part of what I've done in in um, to to participate in this committee, part of what I've done in my professional life has been contracting and accounting. And so, man, I love numbers. So love to uh, be fun when we get to the the numbers part because that'll that'll be a lot of fun. And um, what I hope to get out of this process is I something I think is going to happen. Um, I hope that I can um, contribute without being pushy. And so if I'm pushy, please let me know so that I stop. Um, and so, um, and I think that just to, to listen and, and, and hear everybody else's voices, I think that's going to be um, an interesting part of this whole process. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name's Rick Moses. Um, I've been in the, been in Citrus Ice here now for 15 years with my wife. And um, I've, I retired from the Air Force as an Air Force navigator. I then got to teach high school math. And this past September, I got to retire from teaching high school math. And so now my wife keeps me very active. And so she has plans for me all the time now. I'm thinking maybe I should go back to work. But, uh, but I'm enjoying this So with that part there. And um, the thing that I want to get out of, out of this process is, is that we have seven grandkids. And those grandkids will be growing up and living in the community here. And so I feel like that I'm having a part into what's, what they're going to take over. And then when they become adults, uh, they can either look at me and they can blame me or they can, or they can say, hey, you did a good job. So I'll take either one of those on those parts. But it's nice just to be a part of that to help in the community and to help with something that's going to affect the later generations that come on. Catherine Cooley asked me, uh, what do you do for fun now since I've retired? And I told her, sleep in, knowing that she cannot do that. Uh, <laughs> I'm David Wheaton. Um, one of the, uh, there's several aspects of this which uh, excite me, but um, uh, the fact that it's transparent and that uh, the district is holding themselves accountable for what they do is a part of what we've done. All these buildings, all these improvements in Citrus Heights uh, that uh, Hillary and myself and others, Catherine, have been a part of, uh, Dave and everyone else, uh, have all been a part of a process in which accountability and transparency is the top, uh, top of the order. And uh, the fact that this is, is very exciting. Um, I hope to see that uh, this project becomes a collaboration, uh, a collaboration between the community and the agencies that will be involved with this. Uh, the collaboration is going to be important uh, from a particular aspect for me is that once the construction begins is what are the needs of other agencies that we can collaborate and do some of this project so that we don't end up tearing up the streets two and three times. Uh, which, uh, which is, I think, important to try to uh, do some of these things together if it's at all possible. Uh, and also on the funding aspects of it, um, I, I would be uh, certainly interested in that as well. Um, I think certainly grants that may or may not be out there, it's a little bit doubtful if any federal monies are going to be available. Uh, but local monies, if uh, we're going to have to do something there. I'm a no tax kind of person, but I think when it's absolutely necessary uh, that you have to do it and do it in the right way, and, and that part needs to be a, a part of a collaboration as well with the public. Good evening. I'm Dave Mitchell. I'm with Sunrise Recreation Park District. So it's a pleasure to work with all the parks here in Citrus Heights. Uh, we're a, a major water user, and so uh, thank you for inviting us to be part of the collaboration here. On behalf of the district, we're very excited to be working with everybody around the table. Um, I was very fortunate uh, to run the hills when I was a young kid um, by Yosemite. So if you've ever had a chance to run the hills with no fences and no dogs, you learned whose property to run on, you learned whose property not to run on, and sometimes you got chased off other property. But uh, I survived, and uh, that was a, a really fun experience growing up. 
The other uh, experience, my wife and I love to gamble, so if anybody wants to go to Red Hawk after the meeting tonight, my wife and I will just uh, pick you up on the way over and uh, we'll head on up tonight. So let's not go too long tonight because, you know, it's about a half hour back and okay. forth. Um, well, wait, what, what Sunrise hopes to do is, is the staff here, we hope to help keep the, uh, uh, in mind the customer and the, the, the costs that come with water. Um, there's ever-growing ever demands upon the staff and upon this district. Um, and they have to cover their costs, which is understandable. But we hope to bring a perspective of doing our best to keep our rates as low as we can for the customers. Thanks. I'm uh, Tamar Dawson. I'm the assistant engineer for uh, the water district. Uh, I'm also a resident, so uh, uh, th there's no conflict of interest here, I promise you. <laughs> um, let's see. So. My high point for the past year happened uh, 364 days ago, and that's when they hired me on at the district uh, to be their engineer, so thank you for that. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to see this process work with uh, you know, all the, the committee members and, and all of us as employees, and uh, seeing how you come up with, with uh, an answer to, to give to the board, uh, to ask for their direction, and uh, as an engineer, I'm really excited to get some guidance so I can start designing how we're going to put all these new water mains in the ground. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Thank you, Tamar. I'm Rex Muir, Citrus Heights Water District. I was born and raised in the area. Um, what am I grateful for? I am grateful for that wonderful snowpack I see up in the hills. That's ensuring our future of water for the year. Uh, if you all look up there, you'll see a bunch of white and it's beautiful. So I'm grateful for that. Uh, what do I hope to get out of this process? Um, a great group, it looks like a, I want some collaboration, great ideas, and ultimately a roadmap to the future of our water meter replacement program. I want to ensure that we, we come up with a great solution as a group and as a recommendation to the board so that we can uh, put in some, some good meters for our customers. Hi, I'm Madeline Henry. I'm the Management Services Specialist and Deputy Board Clerk with the district. Um, something I like to do for fun, I sew and quilt as a hobby, and I was talking to Suzanne, who also shares that as a hobby, so that was kind of fun. Um, something I hope to get out of the process. So I hope to get to know all of you and the community. I've been with the district for about two months now, so it will also be a learning experience for me, but I'm excited. My name's Roger Cohn. Uh, I am a project manager with Harris and Associates, so I'm sort of the overall ringleader, at least as far as the technical person and working very closely with Missy here on this project. Um, my high point for, for this last year was I uh, ce celebrated a couple of major milestones. Um, my wife and I were married for 25 years and also celebrated basically 25 years of my career in water. And I think that's probably what I am most grateful for is uh, early in my career, I was able to work on a lot of kind of more engineering related treatment processes and really kind of developed an appreciation and understanding for all the hard work and all the technology that goes into making water clean and pure for everybody. And so it's really gratifying for me to then now as an extension here to be working with the public and, and kind of sharing what I know and also learning from everybody else in terms of what is important to them. Prior to working for Harris, I actually, my wife and I have lived here in uh, Folsom for about 10 years. And prior to uh, coming to work for Harris, I actually worked for several years at the city of Folsom in their engineering department and had a lot of public outreach experience there as well as just kind of knowing what it's like on the public sector. But uh, again, I'm really excited here for this project. So thank you. Thank you, Roger. Uh, my name is David Gordon. I am the operations manager for the Citrus Heights Water District. Um, my uh, favorite thing to do right now is to play with my five and six year old girls. I go out and play any type of sport, whether that's uh, soccer, softball, or, or jumping in the pool. Uh, it's my highlight. Uh, yesterday we enjoyed that wonderful snowpack up at a uh, uh, was it a Tahoe Donner Ski Ranch where kids under six ski free? So great, <laughs> it's great for us. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so what I'm looking forward to in the CAC process is is not only you know to to increase my knowledge of 
everything that we're going to get out of the study, but to increase my knowledge with everybody else here and to hear, you know, the the lens that you guys are going to see, you know, the the information in. And so I'm really looking forward to all of your input. You know, I've been involved with several of you throughout some other projects, and I and I really value those that input. Um, so, thank you. I'm uh, Josh Nelson, the Assistant General Counsel uh, for the uh, the district. Um, something that I like to do is uh, uh, barbecue. Uh, I got a smoker and I'm starting to learn kind of how to do that. Uh, this weekend I did a 14 pound brisket. Uh, it came out pretty good. So, um, What I'm hoping to get out of this process, uh, you know, I, I think this process is really exciting for all the reasons that, that you know, you all have, have kind of said in all of your diverse backgrounds. And so from my end as, as legal counsel, it's just making sure that, um, you know, we're able to cross all the T's and dot all the I's we need to um, so that we have a really successful recommendation of the board of directors. And I'm Hillary Strauss, General Manager with Citrus Heights Water, and uh, I am very grateful uh, for the opportunity to work with an incredible team of staff and elected officials and now our customer base to look at some really, really interesting and complex policy decisions. And I think when it comes to uh, making good policy decisions, process matters. And I think my goal is and my hope is for this process is that it will be successful in helping to build a consensus around a, a phasing and costing and ultimately a funding scenario that will work for the district and its customers uh, to plan tomorrow's Citrus Heights Water District. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Missy Pieri. I'm the engineering manager for Citrus Heights Water District and I've grown up in the area so one thing I, I really love about Sacramento and Citrus Heights is just being close to actually uh, the American River. I just love going down there. So love that we're so close to that. So have a lot of good memories hanging out on, on the river, uh, skipping rocks and hanging out with the dogs. So love that. One thing um, I want to get out of uh, this process is really to develop a plan that will lead us into the future. So looking forward to that process and obviously to get uh, input from you all. So thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Chris Castrita. I'm the Management Services Supervisor, Chief Board Clerk for the Citrus Heights Water District. High point of my year, it was learning that I was going to become a father for the first time. So I've got a baby boy due, thank you very much, due in June of this year. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, one thing I'm very grateful for is the chance to work with all of you. I have had the chance to work on outreach and engagement processes somewhat similar to this in other uh, places of employment. I came from the city of South Pasadena where we had a chance to do a, a handful of projects um, somewhat similar to this, but not to the scope of this sort of planning process. And I am most definitely looking forward to learning from you all about this lovely community and hoping to help shepherd the process in order to make it as transparent, as informative for us as it is for you, and as enjoyable a process as feasible. Thank you very much. And I'm Laura Mason Smith, and I live in our region. Um, High Point this last year was on Saturday, my husband and I got back from a two-week vacation, and it was just wonderful to be with him. We've been married 32 years, and our, we got to see our daughter in the Bay Area because we flew into San Francisco, and then our son picked us up at the airport, so we got to see both of our kids, so that was great. Um, the other high point is really being involved in this process. I think that the team at the district and my fellow consultants are just a dream team. And so I'm so excited to hear what you all have to offer. And I think this is going to be a really valuable process. So um, that's my other high point and what I want to get out of the process. Yes. Can I just make one clarification?
it was the first area that was able to be cleaned up in total and people able to be, be moved back into their homes. So that's a, you know, that's a big, very proud of thing. Great. Thank you. All right, well, now you know more about each other. So um, let's hear a little bit more about the project, about the district. And again, you'll hear a lot of that in the meeting number, the official meeting number one, but Missy's going to come up. We'll go through some background on the district and we'll take a few minutes and then we'll take a break. So you'll know we'll have a few minutes so that you can run down the hall if you wish to. All right, thank you. So I'm just gonna give you a really brief district background. We're going to be talking a lot more about the district at our next meeting on May 29th, I believe, the day after Memorial Day. But um, <clears throat> if you can go to the, the slide here. So where we, where we were back in the 1920s, um, you know, the district was, was established. And the district served a couple hundred farms. So it didn't have this huge development. It was about a little less than five square miles. And before Folsom Dam was, was built, the district purchased water from the North Fork Ditch Company. And water was transported to the area via pipes. And those pipes, you know, were made up of different materials, a lot different than they are today. But some of them were, you know, riveted steel, a thin walled, very thin walled cast iron pipe, and then possibly even some redwood. We found some redwood pipes um, as we've been digging, digging up um, the ground. Obviously, the vast majority of these pipelines have been replaced. Um, so here in red is the an old boundary of, of the district. And on the next slide, you'll, you'll see a, a much bigger a boundary here. As I said earlier, you know, the district was pretty rural until about the 1960s. And so that's when the development boom kind of occurred. We had that growth starting in the 60s through the 80s through uh, private development. We currently now have about 20,000 connections. And we've almost tripled in size as far as uh, square miles. We're about 13 square miles. And we have over 250 miles of pipeline in the ground. And those uh, pipe materials are a lot different than they were back, you know, in the, in the mid-50s, early 20s. So we have asbestos cement pipe. That was mainly installed in the 60s and 70s, which we, we don't use that pipe uh, material anymore, but there's a lot of it that's still in use. Um, we also have polyvinyl chloride PVC pipe, which we currently still use. And then we also have a lot of ductile iron pipe. We still have a little bit of the um, that thin-walled steel pipe that we're we are replacing, and we do have a current water main replacement program, and that program is, is really good until about the year 2030, and, and the purpose of this study is to kind of build on that, that study and, and have a new uh, kind of refreshed water main replacement program. So we will be continuing to you know, look at replacement, obviously. And so, as I stated earlier, we have the asbestos cement pipe and PVC pipe that's about 45 to 50 years old. And so, in, in the next 15 to 20 years, we really see a tidal wave of water main replacement that's needing to, you know, to occur. So that's the whole purpose of this study is to is to find uh, the most efficient, cost-effective way to replace these water mains. So we are hopefully um, getting we'll get input from you all and we'll develop a great plan. So with that, um, that's all I had. Like I said, we'll be going over this in more detail at our next meeting, but that just kind of gives you an idea of, of our district right now. And uh, so let's take a break. Let's take 10 minutes. So if you just would be back here in 10 minutes, help yourself to, if you would like more food, there's food back there and refreshments. The restrooms are down the hall to the left, both men's and women's. <laughs>